Good afternoon. This lesson is about information processing theory. This theory falls into the paradigm or orientation of educational theories, which is cognitivism. This cognitivism tells us this thing that if something is learned or taught according to the mind how it processes, processes and organizes the information, then one learns better. And obviously, we are talking about the system in the brain which is involved in that and that is the memory system. Whatever information which comes to us through our senses, there is retention of information over time. This information, retention of information over time occurs by means of a process which is called as encoding. And this information is stored in memory, memory system which acts as a storage for the information. At the time of the problem, we need information to solve the problem. So that information is retrieved from the memory system into the awareness of a person who uses that information to solve the problem. It is called as retrieval of information to solve the problem. For example, if I am teaching you, let us say, about a disease acute appendicitis, that that information, by means of a process called as encoding, will be stored in your memory system, in long-term memory. Now when that information is required to solve the problem of a patient who is suffering acute appendicitis, or to diagnose him, that information will be retrieved from the long-term memory, will become into your awareness, and you are going to use that information to solve the problem and by this way the problem will be solved because you will be helping the patient and treating a case of acute appendicitis. It is easy to understand the information processing system because there is a lot of commonality between a computer and the information processing system in the brain because computer itself has also got an information processing system. So if you use that example, it will be easier for you to understand the memory system of a human. You see, computer, if you want to function the memory system of computer, it has to be booted. You have to on the button so that it gets booted and becomes active. In brain, there is a reticular active system. And more the reticular activity system is active, more attentive, more attentive the person is. Attention is very important. It is the mental energy. And that is required to transfer the information from the surrounding through your sensory organs into the memory. First, into the sensory memory, then the working memory, and obviously the long-term memory. Without attention, if the student is not attentive, learning does not occur. In a computer, the input comes from keyboard, voice, facial recognition. In our brain memory system, the information comes through receptors, through organs, which are eyes, ears, smell, and touch. The system preceding signals in a computer, if you know, are the transistors, the energy electricity, either transistor is on or off, and a human body, it is again electricity but in the form of action potential, and set of transistors, they are receptors, either receptor is activated or receptor is inhibited. Information stays for seconds or for some time, in computer that is called a random access memory, in case of brain, it is the short term memory and working memory. In fact, like 
random access memory which is the working bench on which the memory works in the human body working memory is the bench where all the information comes from the short term memory from the long term memory and in actual time and help the person to work information is stored in computer which is hard disk in brain which is stored in long term memory the process of information storing in a computer is in form of word documents powerpoint documents they are stored in files in folders as you know that if you open our computer it is files and folders similarly the information which is stored in the memory it is organized it is organized in a very particular way with the help of schemas in which concept sentences and all these things are stored information retrieval process if you think of a computer you give a cue information comes for example if you're searching for a word file you're going to write the name or type the name and the whole information will come out similarly the information which goes into long term memory if it is queued properly linked properly tagged properly it is very easy to recall this hippocampus is the library where all information is stored this is all library like a hard disk in a computer to explain the memory system let me give you an example consider as a bottle a bottle as a whole it is a neck and then is the body understand this whole through which the information is going to go in is the sensory memory this neck is the working memory or a short term memory and this body is the long term memory just imagine the information is falling like this like a water this opening sensory memory short term working memory long term memory now whatever information as i'm talking to you you just consider it for a moment you are hearing my sound that is entering into you through your ears which is a sensory memory which are the memory you are seeing my video through your eyes sensation is going which is a sensory memory wherever you are sitting you might be hearing sounds in you might be sound of ac if you consider you might be able to hear you might hear the clock ticking and the sound just wait for a minute your sensory memory is bombarded with a lot of information but this information luckily stays only half to 4 seconds and it is lost the point is this sensory memory which is there this is going to stay only for half to 4 second or to capture it and transfer it into short term memory so very little is going to go inside one thing is for sure the more attentive you are the more information is going to go into short term memory then there are certain other processes also which are helpful for example let us say if there is a lot of cognitive load on a student you're teaching very fast 
after one and the information is coming, 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 coming in a very lot, in a very, 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 very speed. And each bit is going to stay for half to four seconds. Then much of the thing will be lost. So do not overload the students with facts and information. This refers to the cognitive load theory related to cognitivism. Then there are inbuilt processes also which helps in taking the information short term memory and bishop to attention. One is pattern recognition. Body is trained in such a way that if a long term memory, some pattern is present and stored, and if one sees the information which matches that, it immediately it grabs the attention and goes into short term memory. For example, if you have a car, which let us say is a Honda, it is of red color. Now that pattern of the car is in your long term memory. You are standing on the road, you are seeing so many cars passing by, and the chances are whenever a red color Honda is going to pass, you are going to notice that. This is pattern recognition. There is chunking and categorization. As I was telling you, if you, if you give the information in chunks and each chunk of appropriate size, it's easier for the students to remember. Just to give you an example of chunking, Have you ever realized why if you see your cards, these are debit card or credit card, there are 12 digits in that. It's difficult to remember 12 digits because sensory memory is half second to four second, but they're divided into a set of four. Because when you're writing, you read only first four, since it's made for a small time period, you can write it. Then read next four, next four, but if you have to read 12 and a go and then write, it won't be possible. Try it. Short term memory has also limitation. Its duration is 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, the information which is present in a short term memory is lost. Unless and until making use of the attention, something is done to keep that information in short term memory for a longer time period. That is rehearsal. So when you are repeating the information and rehearsing it, it tends to remain in a short term memory for a long period of time, sufficient that more of this information goes into long term memory. That is the importance of repetition. That is the importance of rehearsal. So important in teaching and learning. Very important thing is, as I was telling you, if you have to recall something from the computer, you have to give some cue to the computer. For example, you are going to write the name of the file and file will come. You will go to a specific folder, then the file will come as you've organized the knowledge. So therefore, if you link the information with something, with a context, with an activity, and then it goes to long term memory, then it is always tagged with those cues. One of the ways is through mnemonics, through imagery. So therefore, if you are teaching in a health professional education, and whenever you are teaching, you tag it with a patient, with a case, with a setting, it is going to remain into long term memory, and when they need it, it can come back when the cue is presented.
Therefore, let us say, if there is an information related to a disease, if this is read in the ward along the bedside of the patient, and in the room or in the library, there is going to be a difference. It will be much more difficult to recall something read in isolation in a different setting than to study something on the patient and elaborative rehearsing, thinking how it is correlating with this patient, what is going to happen, how, why and this thing and then one can recall it in a much better way. So memory is tagged with patients, activities, cues, patient, picture, activity, hospital and one that is tagged with it, it comes back. In summary, if we are talking about constructivism, learners construct activity on the foundation of previous knowledge. It's a previous knowledge plus new knowledge. One dwells meaning to the problem and the tools to construct are doing and thinking. Mind you, doing and thinking according this thing is to be done keeping in mind how the information is processed into a brain and organized into the brain, it becomes more effective. That is why constructivism, many people say, is an offshoot or is a progression of cognitivism into constructivism. I hope this video helps you, this lesson helps you in understanding the memory system or I can say the application of memory system and you can derive many principles from this which can help in teaching. So those principles would be from cognitivism, for example, a principle could be gain attention. It could be maintain attention, it could be teach information slowly, then teach repeatedly the same thing, then teach what is appropriate, whatever information one is teaching, link it with some activity, link it with patient, link it with the hospital proper context. And this way, the learning is going to occur. Only form information processing theory of learning and constructivism, we have identified at least nine principles of learning gain attention, maintain attention, at one point of time. Learn or teach less, learn or teach repeatedly, learn or teach appropriately, learn or teach slowly. Whatever information is there, link it with something, link it with activity, link it with doing, link it with patient. And not only this, the other principles use imagery during learning, use mnemonics during learning, use other techniques which help in long term memory, putting the information in long-term memory. I hope this lesson is useful for you. Have a good day. Enjoy yourself. See you again in the next lesson. Thank you.